About eight months ago, someone left me a heartfelt comment about a mod they were working on and mentioned how my videos had partially aided them in creating it. It came off as very sincere and the comment stuck with me. A few months later, this modder, self-proclaimed trash garbage, resurfaced and asked me to review their upcoming mod called FNV Gameplay Overhaul or simply FNV Go. Trash has been working on this by themselves for over two years now, and I'm very excited to share my thoughts on it. The mod started out around the concept of headshots being lethal, but rather than stopping there, it evolved into a massive overhaul of the entire game, currently sitting at well over 35,000 edits. Encounters have been altered, karma has been rehauled, and NPCs have improved combat AI. Cut content has been restored, and the loot in various areas has been changed to better fit their surroundings. Stats of weapons have been tweaked, and without a helmet, headshots are a death sentence. NPCs react accordingly, initiating combat if the player takes aim at them. Rather than giving you a long list of patch notes though, I'm going to share some of my highlights of playing through it. Note, this footage is from a pre-release build, and there have been several updates since my initial time with the mod. So, I started out this new file with very little knowledge about the mod, except that it's extremely difficult. I've played FNV for like 10 years now, so I figured it wouldn't be too bad. Almost immediately, I notice a nice change. All of your special stats are set to 1 during character creation, so you no longer have to remove all the points from Charisma. However, Charisma is finally not a dump stat, and it now affects the number of companions the player can have at any given time. But old habits die hard, and I end up with a socially awkward but tough son of a bitch named Hard Pete. I then chose Guns, Speech, and Survival as my tag skills. In the Traits menu, I discovered that every trait had been altered, with some being reworked entirely. I dig it. I went with Skilled and Small Frame as my traits, and on my way out of Doc Mitchell's house, I'm confronted with a choice of different starting gear. I picked the Caravan Pack, completely unaware of what I'd end up with, but was pleasantly surprised to find a caravan shotgun. Other than binoculars and some ammo, that's literally all I have. I'm a huge fan of this, as the Courier Stash DLC completely broke whatever early game balance FNV had, but I digress. I enter Goodspring's saloon and talk to Sunny Smiles. This is the 10,000th time I've played through the tutorial mission, so I just need to get drunk first. And perfect. Now I can face virtual reality. I also grab a pool cue on my way out, which I end up terribly regretting very soon. After vanquishing the bottles, I continue on and kill the first two groups of geckos with ease, but am taken by complete surprise as the helpless settler sprints up out of nowhere being chased by more geckos. Due to the increased difficulty of this mod, this change was required for her to stay alive long enough to be saved. So here I mess up, hitting the settler by mistake, and Sunny shoots me in the back. You treacherous bitch. So, I died within the first five minutes, which isn't very inspiring, but I'm going to chalk that up to the alcohol and sleep it off. This time, I'm a bit more careful and actually beat the first quest. Taking things a bit more seriously, I return to the saloon and notice that the emotions of NPCs during dialogue have been assigned appropriately and even have added animations in some cases. Dope. Despite Sunny Smile's betrayal, I decide to join up with the townspeople of Good Springs and we take on the Powder Gangers. Notably, the Powder Gangers have much different tactics than in the core game, and this is probably the best modding addition ever made to Ghost Town Gunfight. They used cover, stealth boys, and even retreated when things went badly. 
I really didn't have much difficulty with this encounter at all, so at this point, I'm thinking it's not going to be so hard. I gather up the Powder Ganger's gear and sell it for a 45, noticing that the DLC weapons have been integrated into the core game. Ammo is less plentiful, which is rough, but enemies aren't bullet sponges anymore either, so it evens out pretty well. Sporting a shiny new pistol and misplaced confidence, I strode into the wasteland, only stopping to shoot this dude in the face. It's tradition. Not long afterwards, I get into a fight with more powder gangers and melt them, obviously. Then I try and fail to disarm a bomb as the hidden skill check was beyond my current skill, blowing up my fucking legs, but no big deal, right? Wrong. I quickly find out that crippled limbs can only be healed with doctor bags or by doctors, and that fast travel is only unlocked by choosing the explorer perk at level 20. So brutal, but I was warned this would be challenging. So I reload my last save, which is all the way back in Good Springs. Yay. I annihilate the powder gangers, buy the 45, kill Barton Thorn, and then make my way back to where I died before, being sure to save this time. I realize that I just need to be a little sneakier, and fuck. I try to brute force it, but I get blown up or shot over and over again. But I know when I'm beaten. I equip the powder ganger armor that I kept from the previous battle and try a hitman-esque approach. Still manage to blow myself up a bit somehow, but take them out and make my way towards Prem. Now, Prem is typically an afterthought in terms of being a challenging area. It's hard for me to remember the last time I died there, regardless of the mods I was using or my character build. First, I see the Force dialogue with the NCR soldier outside Prem was disabled. Awesome. There are some additional mines on the bridge leading into town as well, and I thought this was a good addition as I blew them up. What I didn't know is that various weapons have been assigned sound levels. Certain weapons, like frag mines, alert enemies from a much further distance than, say, a Silence 22. I think this is a really cool change, but as a result, nearly every convict in the town comes running. Given the surprise, I give a pretty valiant attempt before being shot down like a dog in the street. I play through this encounter multiple times, utilizing different weapons and trying my best to stay behind cover, but eventually I go for the path of least resistance, baiting the convicts into the NCR soldiers. It doesn't work immediately, but it's undoubtedly a better tactic than what I was doing. I hobble to the former sheriff's house and sleep in the bed since it isn't owned. On my way back out, I'm ambushed by a pair of convicts and die instantly. Then they kill me a bunch more. Aha! Uh -huh. Hey! 
Even when I manage to shoot the two guys beside me, I get shot in turn by a sniper on the balcony of the Bison Steve. Six deaths later, I kill the convicts outside and run like a coward back inside the house. I take a quick power nap and level up, allocating points into guns and barter before choosing the strong back perk. I notice that nearly every single perk has been reworked as well. My legs are no longer crippled after leveling, which was a glitch and actually not supposed to happen, but I'm not complaining. I manage to kill the sniper and finally reach the Bison Steve. From here, it should be easy to save Deputy Beagle. However, what follows is a storm of death the likes of which I have never seen before. Being outnumbered, I figured explosives were a good plan, but as they mutilated my legs, I remember just how much dynamite sucks. If I had tried a different tactic, or left to get better equipment and level up again, it probably wouldn't have been bad, but hard peat is hard, not wise. Despite the countless deaths and frustration, in this moment, I really appreciated the tension the damage system adds. You're often a single mistake from death, forcing you to examine each encounter like a puzzle. Learning the locations of cover and enemy position slash behavior is at times just as important as aiming skill. After looting the convicts and rescuing Deputy Beagle, I travel to Nipton and congratulate this dude on winning the lottery. Wolpus and Colta acts as an early game boss battle in many of my playthroughs, so what better test for my character's medal? Luckily for me, Wolpus takes a moment to exit the town hall, giving me the perfect opportunity to line up a series of kill shots on his backup before turning my gun on him. With Wolpus and his men dead, I'm starting to think that my misplaced confidence was maybe not so misplaced. So I cheat a little bit, warping to gunrunners, buying some 9mm ammo, and then I teleport to the fort. And now I ask, can a level 2 courier with a submachine gun assassinate Caesar? Two levels and 76 deaths later, Hard Pete becomes the new Caesar. Not bad for an alcoholic mailman.
In conclusion, FNV Go is an excellent mod for veterans of Fallout New Vegas. It makes clever changes that give it a unique feeling, and this video would be over an hour long if I hit on many of its talking points. While at times frustrating, it's also one of the best times I've had with FNV's combat in recent memory. The mod's biggest issue is that it isn't compatible with a large number of existing mods, and it's only going to become less compatible with time. However, I think it does add enough to justify a new playthrough, assuming you can handle the difficulty. The fact that projects of this quality, scope, and passion are still being developed and released nearly 10 years later speaks to what an incredible game FNV really is. I have to give a huge thanks to Trash Garbage for giving me the chance to review their mod, and if you're interested in checking it out, there's a link to the beta release below. As always, thanks for watching.